this weekend. Again, we apologize and we missed the last watch party on Wednesday and I spaced giving you guys an update on why. And it will continue to be spotty messy here and, and there. spotty. Um, we're gonna move we're out moving. of Utah. Yeah, we're leaving Utah. To Las Vegas. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Not, not like that, but we are moving. We're, we're moving. We're, we're gonna move to the great state of North Carolina. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we haven't really told anyone in the uh, internet universe. So have fun with all those rumors, because they're about to go explode. But yeah, we, we were gonna tell you guys no matter what. Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Tuesday, June 18th, and I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. I don't know if you know this, but today I was actually on Juicy Scoop with Heather McDonald. If you haven't seen her episode of Juicy Scoop, make sure to check her channel out, or you can find the podcast out on Apple Podcasts. Basically, we talked about Dancing for the Devil, the 7M TikTok cult. If you watched my video yesterday, you know that I've been dealing with a little bit of the retaliation related to that series, but... The series continues to be successful for Netflix and has resonated with people all over the world, which means that more and more people are learning about Robert Shin. Now, if you are not new here, you know that a lot of my channel is also around Sister Wives and Sister Wives, I have an update for you. You know, people are waiting for season 19. I understand there was some hesitation. Some people are not on board with season 19 given everything that's happened in the family this past several months, but cameras are still rolling. And as they say in Hollywood, the show must go on. They're not actually located in Hollywood anymore. Now, two people that have been staying in the limelight and not been shying away from attention on Instagram, on social media are none other than Tony and McKelty Padron. McKelty is the daughter of Christine and Cody Brown, and she and her husband announced on their Patreon that they're moving. They're moving to North Carolina. And this is pretty wild, everyone, because Christine moved to Utah specifically because she wanted to be close to her grandchildren and she wanted to go back to be closer to her family and to her kids. And McKelty and Tony lived very close to her, which was a primary choice for her to go back to Utah. She wanted to be around her grandkids. And now McKelty and Tony are leaving and going to North Carolina. And this is actually a wild turn of events because for the most part, there hadn't been really a lot of hinting that McKelty and Tony might actually move. And the fact that they're moving to North Carolina is very interesting given that M Maddie Brown lives in North Carolina. Now she says that she's not moving there specifically to be by Maddie and they're apparently not even going to be living in the same city, but will be closer in North Carolina than they are currently today. But this is going to be driving a further wedge in her relationship with Cody and Robin Brown, which apparently has cooled down quite a bit in the last several months. And on Father's Day, Cody Brown was completely and utterly snubbed by his children. Not one child wished him a happy Father's Day. So let's jump, jump into the news from McKelty and Tony about their big move. Yeah, it's a different kind of hot too, because it's not dry heat, it's humid heat, so it's a whole different kind of level, but no snow. Whoa. No snow, and we'll be three hours away from the beach. I'm so excited about that, yeah. to be closer to the water. Yeah, so excited about that, I agree. And the beach on the East Coast is a lot warmer wet than West Coast beaches too, so. Yeah, and compared to right now, we will be super close to Maddie. Yes, so we're not moving specifically to be close to Maddie, it's just like a really nice benefit, is that we do get to have, our, kid, our kids are gonna get some cousins around them too, so that's exciting. Ah, dude, the trees in the green is one of the things we're really looking forward to. Mm -hmm. How does your mom feel about it? Let's not talk about it. <laughs> so interestingly, they say they're going to be about three hours from the beach, so I'm not quite sure where they're going to be moving to in North Carolina. That could be a number of different cities. There's a bunch that are about three hours away from the beach, but they're not going to be where Maddie and Caleb live because where they live, they're only about an hour and 20 minutes from the beach. So it sounds like they're going to be about an hour and a half away from Maddie and Caleb. Now, I'm not sure if they are going to be in a large city, a small city, and it's kind of interesting. Like, I don't know 
why they're moving to North Carolina. Tony has been working and he hasn't really specified what it is that he's doing. He is also traveling to play chess on the chess professional circuit, I guess. I don't really know. So it's with McKelty, she's kind of like a stay at home mom right now. And Tony's job is sort of elusive. They're on, we don't know. For a while, he wasn't working. He was taking care of the kids. I don't know if he's back into banking. I don't know if he's got a new position in North Carolina. I don't know if they're just tired of living in Utah. It's just kind of a wild choice, right? Caleb and Maddie ended up in North Carolina because Caleb was doing school for elevators. So he is a mechanic that works on elevators, and he was transferred to a position in North Carolina. He has a very stable position. He's union. He has a great salary, and it's been a great landing place for Maddie, and Maddie and Caleb have found a good community around them, and she says that she can't, she can't see herself leaving North Carolina. Maddie also has been pretty vocal that she doesn't have a relationship with her father. And this is kind of what interests me is that McKelty says, you know, we're not moving to North Carolina because of Maddie. We're not moving to be close to Maddie. It just is a nice benefit of why we're moving. And they, again, don't really specify why they're moving. They could be moving for any number of reasons. Job opportunities, I don't know. I have no idea. The, the interesting thing here is that the production company that makes Sister Wives is in North Carolina. With Janelle moving and splitting her time in North Carolina, she'll be closer to Janelle and to Maddie. But her mom, on the other hand, is back in Utah and has plunked down a, sniff, a significant amount of money on a very large home that she was planning on having her grandkids stay at and being close to her daughter and her grandkids. So let's find out how Christine feels about things. Um, my mom is, she is happy for our adventure and she supports our choices because we're doing it for us as a family, but she's also extremely sad that we'll be leaving her. Well, a lot of feelings. Of so we're doing as much as we can to like hang out with my pa my parent, my, my mom and David and the kids on the side and my siblings and, um, Tony's family. We're trying to hang out and get in as much time as possible because it will get a lot harder as we, as we get like further away and stuff. So, so yeah. Uh, having, you know, moving, packing, the intricacies of leaving this place and getting a place. Yeah. Are we disclosing the city or are we keeping that? Not yet. High? Not. So we're not, not going to disclose what city we're headed to, but we are headed to North Carolina. Victoria, my mom's not taking it well either. <laughs> no, Tony's mom is not taking it well. You know what I think is interesting is McKelty and Tony are talking about how it's not something that her parents, her mom and Tony's mom are not happy about this change, this move. There's no mention of Cody and of Robin in regards to this move. There were no questions about what Cody thought. And obviously Cody and Robin don't live in Utah. So clearly their take and their opinions won't matter much given that they already lived like 10 hours away from them. However, it's interesting that they're still going to be quite a bit diff like further away. You're talking about moving to the East Coast and they are next to the West Coast. They're presently two states away from the coast in California, but they are literally just due north of Cody and Robin and Flagstaff. So it's in the mountains, obviously, so they have to drive some rugged terrain and in the desert. But you're talking about having to go all the way across the country in order to see someone, which would mean flights traveling, not driving, unless they do a road trip. But there's no mention of Cody and Robin at all, like whatsoever. No specifics about how Cody and Robin are handling it. I mean, given Robin and Cody don't see McKelty and Tony as frequently, given it's not like they're frequently driving, but I will say this, Christine has said that McKelty is often a person that helps with child custody between her parents and that Christine won't meet with Cody face to face when she exchanges truly, and that frequently the exchanges will take place through McKelty. And with McKelty and Tony leaving now, I don't know if Aspen will have to facilitate with that or if Christine and Cody will have to become civil with each other to manage child custody. But the way that Christine has described it in the past is that when they had child custody, truly would like usually go stay over with McKelty and Tony and then Cody would go visit over there. So, you know, I feel for McKelty and Tony because I'm sure in a way 
because of McKelty's relationship with her dad and having a relationship with Robin, she probably end, ended up in the very sticky middle of a very unamicable divorce. For Christine, it was amicable. She would have been civil if possible, but Cody... Cody is a narcissist, and I'm not sure if you're aware, but it's very hard to split with a narcissist. It's very hard to, you know, divorce a narcissist. And Christine, using her children to be the go-between, I understand Christine because she probably doesn't feel safe with Cody and she needs a buffer between her and Cody. But it also puts her kids in a position where they're almost becoming like a mediator between the parents. And that's a lot of pressure to put on their on her children. Also, I should note that McKelty, while she loves her mom and is close to her mom, she has always struggled with her relationship with her mom because her mom was like so taxed when she was growing up that she actually views her older sister Aspen as more of a mother to her. Now, I don't know if this is just like a wild adventure where they're like, you know what, let's go try something new. Let's go move to another state. Let's try North Carolina. And they're going to North Carolina because they already have some level of family there. Or again, if this was a transfer and a move opportunity for work. Either way, it does appear on at least the outer, you know, from a bird's eye view that this could be an opportunity for them to make a clean break from being in the middle of a divorce and being able to do something for themselves. You know, Maddie has said that being in North Carolina and being not in the middle of things in the family has been a really good thing for her and Caleb. And... McKelty and Maddie are close as adults now. In fact, McKelty has said that her closest sibling is Aspen and then Maddie. And Maddie is the only one of her siblings that has children right now. So the only siblings, the only sibling that she would be able to have cousins for her kids would be to go to North Carolina. I don't know, but Christine is not happy. Cody isn't even mentioned. It's kind of weird, right? What else that I find interesting is that McKelty and Tony are basically the only kid of all of the children that still maintained a relationship with Cody. I think the other ones would see him sporadically, but since Garrison's death, there has been a pretty significant change to relationships in that it seems as though Christine and Janelle's kids have gotten closer, but they have not grown closer to Cody and Robin. And th in fact, they're growing further away. In the same Patreon, McKelty also addressed rumors about Aurora because a bunch of people were talking online about whether or not Aurora was getting married. There was some person on Reddit that claimed they saw Aurora dress, dress shopping in Vegas. Though so there's literally no proof of this and there's no photos. It's just like this floating rumor. And McKelty said that Aurora is not getting married and she's not heard anything like that. She doesn't even know that Aurora specifically has a boyfriend. And McKelty has in the past <laughs> made statements like this where she didn't know. So for instance, she was asked once on her Patreon about Leon and, and Audrey and, and someone said, oh, I heard Leon got married. And she, she McKelty was very adamant that that's not true. No, they're not married and they are legally married. So McKelty isn't always the best source for information about what's happening with her other siblings. But I will say this, is that she said that she didn't necessarily know um, because she hasn't spoken to them as frequently. So if there is something going on, she doesn't think that there is, by the way, but if there is something going on, she thinks it would be weird that she wouldn't know about it. I don't know, I don't give any weight to the story about, Ra about Aurora getting married. And McKelty says it's not true, but McKelty also didn't think Leon was married. So take that for what it's worth. Now, on Father's Day, generally, in the past, the kids have posted about Cody, not always, but sometimes. When Cody had a lot more control over the family, he made sure that everyone posted him and told him what a great father he was, because that was his whole shtick. And I noticed that no one posted a damn thing about Cody on Instagram. That doesn't necessarily mean that you don't love your father or your husband or your da baby daddy, like in their case of the ladies, but nobody said a thing about Cody. And Christine, for her part, paid a tribute to David and Maddie, for her part, paid a tribute to Caleb, but said nothing about Cody. So Christine wrote this, happy Father's Day, David Woolley. I have loved watching you be a dad. 
It's what I found most attractive to you besides your eyes, of course. I love how you stop your life for your kids to do what they need you to do. I admire how your children call you all the time so you always stay present in their lives. I love how you love your grandkids. Oh my gosh, my heart melts completely when I see that relationship. You're an incredible example of a great dad. And then she hashtag just be there, happy Father's Day, best dad, be there, talk to your kids, love dad. Talk to your kids, hashtag talk to your kids. Okay, so one thing that Christine has been saying about Cody is that he doesn't put in the effort to speak to the kids. And when Garrison died, one of the things, one of the first things that Christine said was that life is short. Make sure that you check in with those that you love. Don't put like yourself above someone else. Put away your differences and talk. In her statement, again, she's like, I love that you talk to your kids. I love that you're going out of your way to stay present in their lives. And then she hashtags talk to your kids. It's like, again, sort of this reminder that Cody is not talking to his kids. He's basically abandoned them. And when news hit about Garrison's death, one of the stories that came out was that Cody was not interested in reconciling with the kids and that relationships between him and his kids with Christine and with Janelle had gotten worse. And there didn't appear to be any sort of reconciliation. So Cody is like, I'm the best dad when it comes to Robin's kids and him, but he's not the best dad when it comes to everyone else. So it's really wild if you think about having someone be this public, this public, and be unwilling to have even the appearance of a relationship with their family. I don't believe that the breakdown between Cody and his kids is anything new. In fact, I think it's been going on for years. And I think that now that they've left, it just gives him an excuse to not have to pretend like he cares. I think he doesn't care. I don't, I cannot see how any man could abandon 12 children, 12 living children, including Leon, and be okay with that. I can't understand how anyone could do that. It seems like as long as he only cares about the children that are with his legal wife, he only cares about the children that he has with his love. It's sad because I really hope everything between Christine and David works out. I might not love everything Christine does. I might not love the Plexus stuff, but I do want her to be happy. I want her to have a good life and I want her kids to have some kind of father figure in their life, even if they're adults, that models what it's like to be a good dad. They deserve that. Everyone does. And for some of us, not, of, not all of you, not me included, don't have relationships with their fathers. So Father's Day can be kind of bittersweet. So for all of you out there, I hope you had a wonderful Father's Day. And for all of you fatherless by choice or through passing or through alienation or whatever, um, my heart goes out to you. I know Father's Day can be a challenging one. And to all the good dads out there, I hope it was a great one. And as far as Cody and Robin goes, it looks like they are very separated from the family at this point. And McKelty is moving and Christine is heartbroken, but had took a moment out to remind everyone that she's got a good one now and her bad one still isn't talking to the kids. All right, you guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed and click on the bell so you never miss a video. Bye guys.